Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're talking a big development in the Middle East that centers around United States President Donald Trump and his decision to announce that Jerusalem is now going to be recognized as the capital of Israel. Joining us from Loyola University, Dr. Baruz Moazami. He is a distinguished professor of history and also the director of Middle East Peace Studies at Loyola. Thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me. First off, give us your initial thoughts, doctor, about this decision. It was very controversial last week. It is, was catastrophic. It was catastrophic. And it, it was catastrophic because it was against any policy so far the United States has adopted since 1995, that the first time the Congress passed the law that it was catastrophic. It was catastrophic as, for, as much as the international uh, relations are concerns and international communities concerns, as we see today in the United Nations General Assembly's meeting, in the United Nations Security Council's meeting. And it was catastrophic because it does not recognize the right of the Palestinian for their homeland, which is the only way to have a some sustainable peace in the Middle East. You were touching on something as we talked prior about why Jerusalem is so important, because it's Christianity, it's Muslim. So many people recognize that. If you could touch more in depth on why Jerusalem is so important to all of these groups in the Middle East. First, uh, religiously, Jerusalem is important for all three religions, Muslims, Christians, and, uh, and uh, Jews. Uh, in fact, for the first 14 years of Islam, Muslim, rather than praying towards Mecca, they were praying towards Jerusalem. So it shows the, sec the importance of it. It's the second most important place for Muslims. Uh, and for Christians, of course, it's a place of the birth of Jesus, and it's where the Christianity has evolved from there. And for Jews, uh, it's a question of the, the temples, of mount, uh, mountains there, the temples there. So certainly it uh, religiously has importance. Politically, it's, it's, it has not been always important. It became important when the political news, in, when the political attention was paid to the Jerusalem. Uh, last time, uh, first time, of course, is the Crusades, and that Jerusalem became the center of the world. Uh, on 100 years ago, exactly, on September 10th, uh, September 11th, uh, Allen B, the commander of the British forces, went and uh, foot to the, walking towards the Jerusalem, and he claimed, apparently he claimed, because then there's a debate on that, but apparently he claimed that this is the end of this. This is the end of the Crusades. So announcing it on January, you know, announcing it on December, that decision I think has is is a bad move also because it's on the hundredth anniversary of the occupation of Jerusalem, and it is, it reads for the many people that this is the continuation of what Alambi has been doing it since hundred years ago. A lot of people, Jordanians said they cra they chanted. Jerusalem is Arab, the Arab. There was a lot of protest that we've seen on TV. We're going to show a couple here right now. Some people, while the Trump administration and Nikki Haley have said this is the right thing to do, some people have called this an anti-Muslim move. Is it, in fact, an anti-Muslim move? It is also anti-Muslim move. It's not only anti-Muslim move. It's anti-Christian move, too if you want to look at it from the religious perspective. If you want to look at it from the perspective of international law, is the breach of the international law. It's because it kills the whole, posi the whole positions of the uh, two-state two solution that was going on as a base of debate. It's the end of the Oslo Agreement. It's the end of everything that has been going on for at least the last 25 years on, about Palestine is going to go under, uh, it's going to be ignored. So because of that, I think it's a bad decision, not because of the only the Muslim question of it. Muslim question it is a one element of it, but it's a larger picture here. Does it make it more difficult for this administration, for the United States, to work and get things done in the Middle East? Does it make it a more dangerous place for the United States? Certainly it does, certainly it does, because even the allies of the United States, like Saudi Arabia, like Egypt, they cannot answer that to their people. They cannot, they cannot 
legitimize this post. Maybe they'll do it something underneath, but uh, publicly and politically, as they have done it, they cannot, uh, they cannot accept it. This is not an acceptable situation to anybody who is uh, moving and living and uh, working in, pal in, in the Middle East. So what is the logic behind it? Obviously, the president's explained it, but is that good logic to you? What is the benefit of doing this for the United States? Chaos to creating chaos, to creating chaos in the Middle East, to creating chaos in the world, to creating chaos in the United States. Look at whatever he had done so far has been somehow creating chaos. I would call his theory of rule as a theory of the chaotic rules. You can rule better when there is a chaos going on. So that's the chaotic part of it that scares me. But some argue that history will be the judge of this, that you can't make a final decision despite protest, despite pushback until years down the road. Does that argument hold water? No. History has already shown that's not the case. In fact, if you want to talk to the history about the Jerusalem, the best solution that has been offered so far has been the internationalization of Jerusalem, which in 1947, in the partition plan of Palestine, was accepted by even Israelis, uh, was accepted by everybody. And there is a great uh, acceptance of that by the Vatican, uh, by, by the Pope of the time and the Vatican. So I think it's certainly important to bring back that issue. Uh, if the, we have to get the God out of the conflict of the Middle East, and the way to do it, to, re, to give a special recognition to Jerusalem, not as a capital of one city, but as the capital of the humanity, as a capital of where the religious understanding of humanity has evolved. Because of that, I think should, we should go for the internationalization of Jerusalem, rather than giving it to this, city, to this part or to that part. You're the head of Middle East Peace Studies at Loyola University, which is right here on St. Charles Avenue. None of us have a crystal ball, but what happens in the, the near future? When I say near, months, if not immediate years down the road here. What do you tell your students? What happens here? I think it's a further step on for the decline of the United States role in the Middle East. The United States is losing its, uh, its, its importance in the Middle East politics and it's going to further lose it. And it's going to be unfortunately years of chaos ahead of us. Uh, so for that two reasons, I'm against it. I'm against it because it shows uh, how bad the steps would uh, exaggerate the existing conflict in the Middle East and would have more worse results. But some people are for it, like you talked about when this was announced, Netanyahu was in support of it, or is still in support of it. Well, uh, if Netanyahu has to be in support of it. Uh, in fact, the um, reasoning of uh, Trump when he announced it is very much a reasoning of Trump, of Netanyahu, that the facts on the ground are telling us as such. Even uh, Haley in the United Nations was saying, when all the, well, uh, when all the governmental structures are there, when all the uh, parliament is there, why not have our embassy there? So it's I think uh, what it is, it's uh, the United States is being trapped through the Israelis' uh, discourse of, uh, of Jerusalem. All right. Dr. Beirouz Morazami, Distinguished Professor of History, Director of Middle East Peace Studies at Loyola University. We do appreciate your time on this topic. That is all the time that we have, unfortunately. I'm Travers Mackle. This is The Hot Seat. We'll be right back after this commercial break.